high enough. Uh, just terribly unrealistic. And I'm a sucker for realism, so... I know it seems daft asking for realism in a sort of high fantasy game like this, but uh, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. I wonder if pawnbrokers buy stolen goods. Probably not, but it's worth a try. Greetings, Outlander. Do you seek my services? Apparently you don't. Bother. Oh well. Um, I suppose it's going to find this helmet. I'm thinking of installing a mod that allows you to play in third person with a crosshair with the, the, the the player moved slightly to the left of the screen. Um, I used to have it actually once when I last played Oblivion properly, and it was quite good actually. You could even use like archery in third person, which was quite impressive really, because archery in third person oh has always been a bit dodgy in Elder Scrolls well. games. Wow, you're the uh, you're the head of House Redoran, aren't you, Bolvin Vainim? Wow, you do look like a badass, good sir. And I love the katana as well, the Daedric katana he's got. That's awesome. That's cool. Anyway. Uh, I'm going the wrong way, aren't I, for... Um... And yeah, my frame rate is really rubbish at the minute. Again, I, and I really don't know why. Um... Arobar Manor, isn't it, the one I want? Not that I know where that is. Ah, Arobar Manor. In what? Very hard lock. That's a bit harsh, isn't it? Why can't I go in? Oh, wait now. Oh. Really? Very hard. Really? Ugh. I don't even have enough lock picks to be able to get this thing open. Why do you have to be like that game? Why? Hmm? Why do you torture me like this? Uh, maybe if I wait till the next day. Maybe. Maybe maybe tomorrow morning in the game it'll open. Because after all it is technically just another house. So I suppose maybe it would. Although as odd as it seems to be robbing someone's house during the middle of the day. Um, no, you're still locked. Still locked. Oh uh, no! I, lock I have six lockpicks, this will never do. I'm not amused. Anyway, never mind. Let's think of something else to do. Until I've managed to find myself some sort of spell or scroll that will be able to get that thing open. Um, I begin to think I should have picked security after all. Um, as a skill at the start, but never mind. Oh, it's nice and sunny now at least. Um, what can we do? Part of me wants to go to Ghostgate just for just for the hell of it, actually. I don't really know why, just because it might be fun. Let me think. I did want to go to Sadrith Mora, didn't I? And Sadrith Mora is kind of in that sort of direction, I guess. So, let's see, if I go from Aldrum down past that dead ruin up to Ghost Gate past Ghost Gate somehow well according to this map there doesn't seem to be a road you probably can't see it very well on YouTube but there is, on this map I don't I don't really see a road leading from Ghost Gate 
across here, so I'd probably have to go a bit cross country. But yeah, from Ghost Gate cross country to the edge of the Z Zafir Bell Bay, that's called, I think, near Telfir. Or Telfire, I don't know how you pronounce that. Near where Uvarith's grave is. And then I could just sort of like hop across all these islands and then make it to Cedric Moor. I mean, you know, in theory I could just go get a boat somewhere, but I feel like a challenge. And a bit of a cross country run. So I'd probably loot some ruins on the way or something. So yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. Go on an epic quest into the wilds. Lord of the Rings style. Just uh, with more ash deserts. And fewer orcs and dragons and things. And ring wraiths. Oh, stop it. Mm. It does all look quite nice, though. I like the little addition of uh, little sort of tufts of sort of burnt grass. That's quite cool. And a big nasty looking Daedric ruin, probably full of big nasty looking monsters. I'm going to stay clear of there. One difference with Morrowind, I think really compared to Oblivion, you were really taught to fear some ruins. Yeah, I mean seriously. Because in Oblivion everything's leveled so you could just pop off into any ruin you encountered along the way with no real consequence, you know, you, you with the, with confidence that you'd be able to kill pretty much anything that was inside, but on this, uh, you know, you don't, you don't go near a Daedric Ruin until you're at least level 10 if you know what's good for you. There's the ghost gate, the go sorry, ghost gate, ghost fence even. Very impressive. Very cool looking. Especially in this. Alright, have it have at it then, come on. Get a decent spell at the ready. Um Fire bite. Die, fiend. What where have you gone? Oh. You can sneak up on me from behind you. Ha. Showed you who's boss. I should probably not pick things up, should I? Because I'm probably quite near to my carrying capacity. Yeah, I am. Uh, I could do with the healing potion. That'll do. Uh, yeah. Ghost, ghost fence. Very nice. Very impressive. Lots of lore behind it as well, which I like. I like having. It's nice having a big, land, big landmark in a game. Um, but it's even better when there's lots of lore surrounding it. Sort of like the White Gold Tower in Imperial City in Oblivion. Uh, all the much less impressive than the ghost fence because it's not really explained other than, oh, it's, it was just a big Dwayne. Oh, sorry, not Dwaymer. Uh, Aeliad thing. And that's about all it says about it. Could be wrong. Maybe I'm just ignorant, haven't read the right books, but yeah. Lots of stuff surrounding the ghost fence, which I won't spoil for you or explain to you right now because I don't have time or the inclination to do so. But yeah, there it is. Big, impressive. Quite cool. Fueled by dead ancestors, I think. The spirits of dead ancestors. Something like that. And you've got the little statues with Elm Alexia and Vivek and Swafa Sil, I think. But anyway, enough sightseeing. We've places to go, things to see, people to stab. But yeah, this all looks quite nice. Personal opinion, mind, but I think this all looks quite good. What I do like about it compared to, say, you know, Morrowind with, you know, all the, uh, all the visual enhancements is that it has a consistent. Uh, whoa, there's a red thing over there. What's that? What the hell is that? Good. Whoa. That's very odd. Anyway, um. It has a consistent aesthetic, and by that I mean it doesn't just have nice looking graphics, it has consistent looking visuals. Um, and I'm trying to think of how I can explain this properly. Um, 
You know how... Well, I suppose in the original Morrowind, everything looked quite kind of brown and desaturated, didn't it, really? Um, that's a consistent aesthetic, because everything in the game matched that kind of browniness, uh, I guess. Uh, and in Skyrim as well, everything's quite dark and gritty, you know. It has a consistent aesthetic, you might you might call it. Or on the other end of the spectrum, say, you've got Super Mario. Very consistent aesthetic, you know. Lots of all the cartoony characters look kind of have similar similar design, you know, all the colours fit well together. Um and Morrowind with the enhancements on doesn't have, in my opinion, a consistent aesthetic. It's not anyone's fault in particular, it's just because all the tech retextures and stuff for Morrowind are created from well, it's it's just a big pack of compilate. It's a it's a compilation of different textures from lots and lots of different modders, and that's great, you know, seeing all the community's work come together. But on the other hand, that's basically just sort of cobbled together on the basis of one guy's personal tastes, you know. Whereas on an actual game, a norm, an actual proper video game like Skyrim, for example, um, you have an entire team of art designers and level designers looking at textures and models and stuff in the game to make sure they all fit a certain aesthetic. Um, which is why you get in some places, I don't know if you noticed in one of the other videos I did, which is why you get weird things in the Morrowind visual upgrade pack like uh, the ice castle which looked like it was made half out of asbestos and half out of uh, ice. You know, like it had, it was made, all made out of ice obviously th in theory in the game but some of the ice was sort of this weird green colour and some of it was like blue and it looked very odd because it had been cobbled together from a two different two different like textures by probably different authors and as a result it looked really weird well, um, you may not have understood anything I said because I'm very rubbish at explaining things but yeah that's what I'm talking about and probably again one of the reasons I wasn't massively fond of Oblivion is that it had a very poor aesthetic in terms of whether it was consistent or not because in Oblivion you know you had lots of brightly coloured clothes and stuff and weird looking people um, I mean you you, uh, you can you, you can see for yourself when we're playing this all the sort of puffy weird faces people have um, almost cartoony really and then coupled with that you had this sort of attempt to be very realistic in terms of like the weapons and the blood and the gore and that sort of thing and the armor and then um, Cyrodiil itself for example was like very green and pleasant and bright colored and nice and stuff like that and then you had Oblivion as in the realm of Oblivion not the game um, which was all very dark and there was like blood everywhere and uh, lava and stuff like that and it just didn't it didn't gel very well. It wasn't. It didn't feel consistent. You know what I mean? I know by its very nature, going into the, the plane of oblivion wouldn't feel exactly like Cyrodiil. But on the other hand, 